welcome back to the channel everybody so we are going to be continuing on with our cavalier push today we are going to be doing x 6.1.3 which once we clear will leave us only three levels left to go before we hit that cavalier title so we're getting there quickly um we'll actually have it done by the end of next week i believe uh, we'll be pushing out the last video on that, so that's exciting. Um, you can see here the team we brought in. Uh, there is one minor change on here. We did actually switch out Star-Lord for uh, Stark Enhanced Spidey. I should have probably left Star-Lord in for the uh, combo bonus, but I wanted a little bit stronger of a tech, and I wanted somebody who I could dex really well with. Um, the reason for that is because of the path node here, which is long distance relationship. While you are close to the defender, every three seconds that you spend next to them, you're going to pick up a weakness charge. Now, once you get away from them, those weakness charges will start to drop off over time. You just gotta spend as much time away from them as possible. Be careful, don't allow yourself to get caught up in the corner. Now, that being said, Weakness can actually be a double-edged sword of a debuff because it doesn't do any actual damage to you. It just makes it so that you do less damage to the opponent. If you have your willpower mastery on or ideally fully maxed out, you can actually use that to your advantage if you can get in there and not take too many hits but yet build up several of those weakness charges because then as you have those on uh, the weakness debuffs on you, you can actually regen quite a bit of your health back for finishing the fight or continuing on to the next one. Uh, speaking of the next one, let's go ahead and take a look at the path here and see who all you're going to be facing. Obviously, right off the bat, we've got Old Man Logan, followed by Vision Age of Ultron, Deadpool, Agent Venom, Kingpin, Rogue, Ghost Rider, and then Thing. I will let you know, Thing was the only match on this whole entire path that we struggled with in any way, shape, or form. That's mostly just because I'm not really great against Thing. He is one of those champions that can be really of a pain. Uh, do make sure that you're planning for that, but outside of that, this is a very easy path to go through as long as you're making sure that you're spending that time away from your opponent when you have those weakness charges on you so that you can get them back off of you and making sure that you keep enough distance between the two of you that you don't have a chance of getting count, uh, cornered. Your boss for this one after your switch out node, if you choose to use it, will be Ghost. Now, Ghost does have several nodes on her, the first one being Limber. Every time you cause a stun on her, the duration of your corresponding next stuns will be reduced. So do keep that in mind if you're going to do, uh, do something where you need to stun her several times. Every time you're doing it, you're going to have less time to do whatever you're wanting to do against her. Uh, she also has True Strike, so she's going to ignore your armor, resistance, and auto block uh, abilities. She has Aggression, so every two seconds she's adding a Cruelty buff. But every time you land a hit upon her, you're going to remove one of those charges as well as pause the timer. After that, she has enhanced crits as well as God Slayer. Now with the God Slayer, that does mean that her specials have 50% increased crit damage. So do be careful on taking any specials from her. Watch making sure that you are baiting out the special ones and special twos, but don't get caught on them. So right off the bat here, we did come up against Old Man Logan. We brought Stark Enhanced Spider-Man in. We could have brought Aegon in or kept Star-Lord on the team and brought him in just the same, but I brought in Sparky here because not only has he got a better health pool than what my Star Lord does, um, he does a lot better at dexting. Plus, on top of that, he the Vade, so you can get those weakness charges off a lot quicker and keep them off. Um, the thing about it is, though, of course, 
these fights can be a little bit longer because you are trying to make sure that you are keeping that accurate distance. Uh, somebody like Apocalypse, like I said, you can do it with. And we could have gotten his charges a little bit sooner. We are still going to use Apocalypse on the path. But you do have to keep in mind that he is a more aggressive champion outside of his specials, which do help you get some distance on champions, but it's not necessarily going to be the way that you're going to play it. Uh, you can see here, though, even adjusting your playstyle slightly here with someone like Captain Marvel Movie, where normally we'd be getting up on the champion constantly, trying to bait out those parries. We're keeping our distance repeatedly so that if we need to activate our binary charges, which we are still building up, we don't have a lot of weaknesses on us at the time that we do because we want to make sure that we're doing as much damage as possible. As you can see there, we did get triggered off of that special one and lost our SP3, but did go ahead and activate the binaries and did as much damage as we could and then just turned around and went right back to the plant. Build back up, avoid getting those weaknesses anytime we do, get that distance on him so that we don't have to have those build up. Keep that distance. Once again, just build back up those binary charges, build back up to the SP3, be ready to finish the fight or carry over to the next one. And as you can see, we did activate the SP3 here. Um, this did, with just shy of full binary charges, um, obviously put us up to 21 there, which did make a huge difference in finishing the fight. Again, Stark Enhanced Spider-Man against Deadpool here. This is, again, one we could have brought in Apocalypse for, but we were going for the class advantages and the easy ways of keeping the weakness charges off. Now, that being said, Deadpool is very active on getting up on you. And if you're not playing it well, you do take the chance that he could end up landing you in the corner just like you're about to see here. Now, this is where you're going to see a lot of these weakness charges building up. Because you can already see we're at 3, 4. We're going to get up to, I believe, 7 before we can finally get him far enough off of us to keep him off. But you can see there how much health we're gaining. Now, on this account, I only have the Willpower Mastery at 1 point. If you have all three in there, you can gain quite a bit of regen off of that, especially if you have salve on or anything else, so you can put a little extra on there. So we did go ahead and finish off Deadpool fairly easily there, like I said we would. Um, continued on. Brian Apocalypse here, like I said, this can be done with any of your champions. Pick your best guys, go in and do this. Um, if you can do class advantages, that's 100% great, but they're not absolutely necessary. The only thing you need to do is really adjust your play style slightly and make sure that you're keeping off of them when you've got weak discharges on you long enough to get them off and avoiding letting them push you into the corner. So if they are getting aggressive, push them back a little bit, take the chance of getting a few weakness charges and then back off boil them off and go right back in this the thing about this is is this is going to be one of your very first opportunities to really start working your way to being one of the upper tier guys what makes a difference between the best guys in this game and the rest of us is the small mistakes it's the mistakes that you make every single time but they barely hardly matter because you only take one combo or two combos. But the thing about it is, is once you get up into those higher levels, taking one combo or two combos could mean the difference between whether or not your champion survives the match. Whether or not you're using a revive. Whether or not you can finish the path. So, taking the time now and using it to... 1% better yourself each fight, make a few less mistakes, take a few less hits, get those combos up a little higher, 
and be patient no matter how long the fight takes can make a world of difference once you get up into the higher tier gameplay. Now you can see here we did again bring in Apocalypse for the uh, class advantage against Crossbones here. This one we're not doing horrible at by any means, but it is definitely one of those things that we uh, are slipping up several times here. You can see exactly that's what I mean. You know, you see how many times that we build up the combo and then lose it because we just didn't time our, our getting away right. We, we slipped up on the decks. We slipped up on the parry. Maybe we spent a little bit too much time up and got too many charges on. These are the small things that are going to make the hugest mistakes. Kingpin is going to be a great example here. Kingpin is one of the easier fights to go up against. As long as you can bait out that SP1 and wait for that baseball swing, right as he hits that, that swing, jump in there and immediately get a couple combos off, get him right back up to the SP1, rinse, repeat over and over again. He should never be difficult to take. The problem is, is A, if you screw up and push him to that SP2, which is a little more difficult to avoid unless you have a champion like Tigra, or if you are just not being timely about your moves, he can wreck you really hard. But, again, if you are making sure you're sticking to it and not making mistakes like I did right there, it can make a huge amount of difference. You'll see here with Aegon, I'm going to make a couple mistakes, but we're still going to come out of here without a problem. The problem is, is because of the, those mistakes, I'm not going to get a good combo going here, so I'm not building up my charges for the next match. So that's going to make, that's going to, you know, I'm still going to get through him, but I set myself backwards. As a matter of fact, it's going to be to the point where I get so few of charges with Aegon between here and Ghost. There's no point in having him on the team for the final fight. So he is going to be who we switch out. Especially considering I didn't have Star-Lord in for the combo shield. Now that wouldn't matter if we weren't making small little mistakes. Again, right here. Um, you know, small little mistakes. We're, we're eating up a bit of damage. But, as you can see, we get a couple of those willpowers uh activations off of getting the debuff put on us and we can keep ourselves alive long enough to go ahead and compensate for those little mistakes but that's because this is a level that we're still at that we can handle those mistakes and come back from it now if we were at a point where she could do 25 to 30 percent of our health off a single hit we would not have made it through that fight so this is one of those things like i said guys i'm i'm never shooting for perfect gameplay but i will tell you how to how to improve over time because that's really the goal of it all now here we brought in tiger just because ghost rider is a, kind of a pain at this point Especially when you have to keep so much distance on him. Uh, so we figured she could go ahead and handle it for us. She did most of it. Uh, so we turned over to Aegon. Thinking again, maybe we could get the combo up enough to carry us through. And maybe have him for that final fight. And we just didn't do it. He is not bad here by any means. We're, we're going to get a decent fight going here we are going to make it through this fight Aegon does win but we're going to push him all the way up to that sp3 and it doesn't matter that i have a 39 hit combo here because bye bye it goes <laughs> but we like i said we do go ahead and finish this fight and move on to the next one we just didn't bring anything out of it which meant that those little mistakes are what I'm going to pay for not only now but in the next fight where I'm not built up enough to be able to do enough damage against thing here to make this an easier fight and instead we are going to struggle 
This, like I said, is the only time that we struggled on this entire path. So, you're going to see me use a couple different champions against him, but we are going to finish him off. Captain Marvel movie ends up dealing the death blow against him here, but it's not going to be pretty, folks. Uh, it's uh, definitely a fight. Now, one of the bad things about it is, is I'm really bad about making sure that I don't let him get above those 15 stacks. Uh, the key to it is, is if you can get him to 15 stacks and have him trigger an SP1 without putting more stacks on him, he will actually shed all of those stacks and you can go back to the fight being the way it is. Obviously, you can see here, I don't do that. I push him to that unstoppable and that makes it really hard to avoid getting wrecked by him um, Aegon mm, can do it uh, especially if you're playing smart but obviously if you're not playing smart and you're putting those stacks on without removing them when you're supposed to you are going to turn around and just get wrecked and then I can't get the combo up and especially without the combo shield there is absolutely no point to Aegon um, this late in the game. So we turned around and brought Captain Marvel movie back in because she was nearly full binary. Uh, that actually is going to do more of the work than anything. So it was more of a cheat code because he couldn't stop our attacks and they were super powered. Uh, for, uh, for Ghost, we switched over switched out Aegon and just brought in Hulk. Now, this is going to be fairly straight. Like I said, the downside to the Hulk juggle for this is the fact that we are going to lose stun duration every time we go to do it. But, again, we've spent this entire level adjusting our play style so that we could avoid being too much up on anybody. So we just took advantage of it as we could. You know, we knew that we weren't going to keep the stuns up. We knew we weren't, we weren't going to corner her and deal every bit of damage in one blow. But if that's not what we're going to do, we'll just go ahead and whittle it down little by little. And we did that this time. Um, this is not going to be perfect gameplay by any means. It never is. But this is going to be a one-shot Hulk versus Ghost and without being able to properly stun juggle. So... Um, that's the closest that we're going to get the whole entire time is to have three stuns in a row. And as you can see, three stuns in a row meant that our next stun didn't even last long enough for us to get in there and do the damage. But, hey, we're still going to eat her down and 10% left, 10% on us. Could go either way, but it doesn't. <laughs> so that is all she wrote, folks. And that one is another one in the books. And we are ready to move on. So we only have a couple left, like I said. Uh, we should be finishing up this one by the end of next week. And then it's just going to be finishing up Paragon, guys. We'll be doing the live stream on Sunday. As well as the crystal opening on Monday. We're getting really close to the 4th. Um, planning a pretty big opening for that. So I hope you guys are able to join me for that opening um if you guys want to contribute to that opening you're more than welcome to do so but no one's expected to but i will make sure that it's going to be entertaining for all of you so until then and until our next one i'll see you back next time guys peace out